So this, this morning we're talking about time management. So the purpose of our time this morning is we're talking about time management. So I know that in the course of it, we are experiencing time management right now. We have a lot going on in the course of our day. And that's normally how the life of a realtor goes. The life of anyone that's in the business goes. You have a lot to do. And we have the same amount of time to do it in. Lots of times, though, as we think about our list, when we see our list, we start thinking we can get overwhelmed when we feel like we have more to do than time to do it in. And so we have to be able to prioritize in order for us to eliminate the agonizing feeling of what takes place in many of our lives. So there's a statement I say about this, and that is, Productivity is experience when we commit priority to the right activity. Hold on, hold on, bring that back. Bring that back. Bring that back. <laughs> From my man, Jay Rashad Thomas, we're going to bring that back. Here we go. It's page 69 in my book, Make Every Day a Wednesday. So for those of you that have it and haven't got to that page, you can just go right there. There it is. But it says, productivity is experienced when I commit the right priority to the right activity. So when you think of time management, think from the perspective that it is going to be okay to not get everything done. That's the first thing you have to start to tell yourself. It's going to be okay if I don't get everything done on my list every single day. And the reason that's important for us to go ahead and say is because that's what makes priority very important. Because if everything has to get done and I put the wrong things at the top, the right things at the bottom, and happen to go back to that first statement that everything's not going to get done, now I'm now in a bad place. The Pareto Principle says... 20% of your efforts yield 80% of the results. 20% of your efforts yield 80% of your results. So if I know and I've identified the right 20, I now can focus there and put 100% of my energy, resources, and time in my 20 where in most cases we put 100% of our efforts, energy, and time in the things that we think are getting us results, in the things that we like to do, in the things that we make a lot of noise in our life, and we put that there. But if you really want to get productive, you may have to learn words like no. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, let's just practice. If you've got food in your mouth, go ahead and chew it, and you can just nod your head this way. See, nose this way, right? So let's just practice with no talking. Just no talking, but let's just say no real quick. No talking. Listen to me. you got to say that word if you're going to be productive. You have to begin to say no to things and not yes to everything which means that if you do not eliminate the people-pleasing syndrome, you will not be as productive as you can be. Every request that comes to you is not for you. Productive people know how to pick and choose which to do in order for them to make progress, not just have activity. Get on the treadmill, we can get effort and we can exercise, but we will not move from point A to point B if we're walking. We'll get exercise. And that's how many times we live in, a, in our lives. We're doing a lot, but we're not moving forward in our doing because the next thing is we are not measuring everything. So when you really are looking at getting productive, you're going to measure everything that you do. So the sheet that I gave you, 
I pulled this out. Of course, y'all know my backstories. I ran dealerships for AutoNation before starting to assist you to win. And one of the things that I did in our dealership, I had sheets that looked kind of like this that all of our sales associates had to go by on a day-to-day -day basis. So when you're thinking about being productive, you need to think about being consistent. Because consistency is going to actually give you more progress than just having the peaks in your life, but not having the valleys where you're consistent. Shawshank Redemption is a great example of it. You know, we've seen the movie, he puts up the, the poster, he takes the poster down, and he taps on the wall. Notice that the tap was not all over the wall. The tap was in the same spot every single night that he was tapping in that same area. When you really want to get productive, you're putting yourself in the same direct area and you start tapping at that area and you do that over and over. And what happens is pressure over time equals results. So we put pressure in the right area. A sheet like this helps you to become consistent. So I, wrote, I, I jotted a couple things down. Number one, you got to measure everything. Number two, you got to see what's moving the needle. When you measure everything, you're able to see what's moving the needle in your business. Here's what I put down. One of the people, they were, they were talking, and I wrote this down. If you want to, I believe it was my man right here, he was sharing, and he was talking about principles. Principle living equals predictable outcomes. Principle living equals predictable outcomes. So you got to have some principles. So I'm just going to talk about one today for the sake of time, and we'll continue into this journey. So the first one I want, I want to show you is that uh, understand this, check in, check up, check, check out. So if you went to your house th today and you went into, the, into your home and it's, if it's cold outside but your house is cool inside, what is normally the first thing you're going to do if you're real cold when you get home? You're going to do what? You're going to check the thermostat and you're going to turn it up. In our business... When is the last time you check on the areas of your business to make a change in one of those temperatures, in one of your thermostats? Lots of times we wait too long to measure, and so we let things go too long when we could have changed the thing a lot sooner, which would have gained us some results a lot quicker. So if you don't have a check-in, check-on, check-up system that happens in the course of your day, you're waiting to affect change when you could just make change happen right now. So I'm telling you, don't let it go too far away without you having your systems in place. So this here, the 72-hour mind shift is something that I want to talk about today, and that's all I'll, I'll, I'll deal with. The 72-hour mind shift is this. Yesterday's 24 hours... Today's 24 hours, tomorrow's 24 hours. 72 hour mind shift. If you'll learn to wrap your head around yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yesterday, I need to think from just one principle, one thing calls. I want you to think about everything that you did yesterday. Who are the calls that you need to make from yesterday from a follow-up system that will help you to have progress in your business? So what's a one thing call? A one thing call is a simple call that goes like this. What's the one thing that kept us from moving our business forward? So if I'm dealing with the client, First off, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to meet you and to earn your business. And as, as we were here, I'm just curious, what's the one thing that would keep us from moving our business forward? As they say it, you've now isolated the objection. In isolating the objection, you now know what to overcome in order for you to move your business forward. One thing calls. So we should all be making one thing calls slash follow-up calls from our yesterday's business. Today. I need to think today, inside of my today, who is it that I'm going to impact and influence that's going to move my business forward today? That's where I'm thinking today. I'm thinking, what do I need to learn? What am I going to do? Who's on my agenda? What needs to be here? And what am I going to do today that's going to move my business forward? Every day I should be doing something that's moving myself forward. Tomorrow, I'm thinking tomorrow, the success is in the setup. If I'm not set up for tomorrow, I am now back hoping for my tomorrow to be what it needs to be when I could be planning for my tomorrow, preparing, which gives me a better chance than hope and luck. 
just this philosophy right here and then repeating it over time will cause productivity to occur in your life and it will cause you to prog progress and not digress. How? Because yesterday I'm following up with the people. Today I've been, I'm doing what I need to do to move it forward. And then tomorrow I'm now thinking set up in my mind because success is in the setup. 72 hour mind shift. Begin to incorporate this in and measure everything. Measure everything. So now I'm going to measure what's the results of what I'm doing. Because remember, in measuring, what am I looking for? I'm looking for my doing. I'm looking for my delegating. And I'm looking for my deleting things. I'm looking for all three of them all the time. But if you're not measuring, you're not going to find what you should be doing. You're not going to find what you should be delegating. And you're not going to find what you should be deleting. Because remember, you're only going to get the time you get. So we must, as I stated at the beginning, think productivity, not just multiple activity. Productivity is experience when we commit the right priority to the right activities.